Let's pray the Lord for every giving God the glory one more time, thanking him for his grace and his goodness. Welcome this morning to Mount Hora and Apostolic Church. Praise God. Hallelujah to our Sunday school lesson today. Praise the Lord Jesus. We thank you and we acknowledge, praise God, that God is good and God is great. To Bishop Andrew Landell, to Evangelist Coronet Landell, to the Brethren of Mount Hora and Apostolic Church, Minister Forbes, Minister Campbell. Praise the Lord. And to the brethren here also at Erickton Emmanuel, the officers and the brethren, we greet in Jesus' name. And to those who are also watching on social media, please accept greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour. Before we go into the Sunday School lesson, please bow your heads with me. Praise God. And let's ask God for his leading. Praise God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you one more time for your grace, your goodness and mercy. Lord, we bow down before you humbly lord god to desire a word of teaching from you father we pray out of the teaching comes wisdom understanding and knowledge and we pray god that we can apply these hallelujah to our lives let the word impart in us lord god let the word be stamped in us lord god and bring understanding to, to, to the hearer oh god as we give glory and praise in jesus name praise the lord today's january the 30th 2022 and we're looking at series two of praise the lord which is standing on the promises of god lesson 2.4 holding on to god's promises and the lesson idea today is i will hold tightly to god and his plans for my life focus verses for today are genesis chapter 32 verses 26 and he reads and he said let me go for the day breaketh and he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Lesson text is Genesis chapter 32, verses 34 to 32, and Genesis chapter 33, verses 1 to 16. The writer here, praise the Lord of Genesis, is Moses. So Moses, the writer of the first five books of the Bible, we know them as the Torah and of the Pentateuch. So the theme that we have today is standing on the promises of God. So a promise may be referred to as a declaration or an assurance that one will do something or that a particular thing is going to happen. There is a song that can be found in the Pentecostal hymnal, hymn number 18, and it bears reference to the same title of the theme, standing on the promises of God. The writer goes on to say, standing on the promises of God as I cannot fail, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Saviour as my all in all, but standing on the promises of God, hallelujah. And we can tell you today, when you stand on the promises of God, you cannot fail. God is not a God that he should lie. Praise God. And God is a God that, if he says something, he's a God that keeps his promise. Not that some people, they make a promise, they make a vow, and sometimes they break it. But you're dealing with God here. Come and keep in God. The main characters, praise the Lord, of this lesson are Jacob and Esau. Jacob means one who follows on another's heel. His name can also mean supplanter, trickster, or con artist. He is the second born of the, the two twins, praise the Lord, hallelujah, to Isaac and Rebekah, praise the Lord. When his father was born, hallelujah, his father, sorry, when the twins was born, his father was 59 years of age and Abraham was 159 years of age. Like his father, he was of a quiet and gentle nature. And when he grew up, followed the life of a shepherd. While his brother Esau became a cunning and enterprising hunter. His dealing with Esau, however, showed much mean selfishness and kindness. And we see that in Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 to 34. When Isaac was about 160 years of age, Jacob and his mother conspired to deceive the aged patriarch. We see that in Genesis chapter 27. With this in view, 
praise the Lord, they conspired to transfer the promised birthright to himself. Praise the Lord Jesus. So soon after his acquisition of his father's blessing in Genesis chapter 27, Jacob became, became conscious of his guilt and afraid of the anger of Esau. At the suggestion of Rebekah, Isaac sent him away to Haran, 400 miles to his uncle Laban, to find a wife among his cousins, the family of Laban the Syrian. There he met with Rachel in Genesis chapter 29. Laban would, his uncle Laban would not give him his daughter in marriage till he had served seven years. But to Jacob these years seemed like only days, for he loved Rachel so. But when the seven years was expired, and Jacob asked for his wife, Laban craftily deceived Jacob and gave him his daughter, Leah. Hallelujah. Laban simply says that we don't give the younger one in marriage before the elder one gets married first. So Jacob agrees to work the seven years for, for, for Rachel. Hallelujah. At the close of the 14 years of service, Jacob desired to return to his parents, but at the entity of labor, he tarried yet another six years with him, tending his flock. I see that in Genesis chapter 31, verse 41. Note here, he then set out his family and property to go to Isaac, his father, in the land of Canaan. Laban was very angry when he hears about this. Hallelujah. And he set out on his, on his journey and pursued after him, overtaking him in seven days. The meeting was of a painful kind, and after much discrimination and reproach directed against Jacob, Laban is at length pacified and taken in an affectionate farewell of his daughters, returns to his home in Pad Padanaram. And now all connection of the Israelites with Mesopotamia is at an end. But note soon after parting with Laban, he is met by a company of angels, as if to greet him on his return and welcome back home. To the land of promise. He called the name of the place Bahan Aim, which means the double camp, probably his own camp, and that of the angels. Not here the vision of angels, <coughs> excuse me, was the counterpart of that he had formerly seen at Bethel, when twenty years before the weary, solitary traveller on his way to Badanaram saw the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder whose top reached the heaven. In Genesis chapter 28 verse 12 he says and he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on earth and the top of it reached the heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Now he hears with dismay of the approach of his brother Esau with a band of 400 men. Jacob now is in great agony of mind as he prepares for the worst. In Genesis chapter 27, verses seven to eight now, sorry, Genesis chapter 32, verses seven to eight now, Jacob fears and he's in a panic, <clears throat> excuse me. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies and says if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it then the other company which is left will be able to escape. Jacob was greatly distressed and he was afraid. When Laban had confronted Jacob with a hostile manner Jacob boldly stood up to him and spoke and gave him a piece of his mind. Yet Jacob was afraid to meet Esau. This was because Jacob knew 
he was in the right with Laban, but he knew he was in the wrong with his brother Esau. Jacob had just been delivered from Laban, but he was oppressed by another load. The dread of Esau was upon him. He had wronged his brother, and he cannot do a wrong without being haunted or haunted by it afterwards. Jacob was greatly afraid and greatly distressed. Before Jacob left home after his brother, who swore to kill him. Rebecca told Jacob until your brother's anger turns away from you and he forgets what you have done to him, then I will send and bring you from here. Genesis chapter 27 verse 45. Rebecca never sent for Jacob therefore. He had every reason to believe that Esau was still angry with him 20 years later. But Jacob also had every reason to believe God would protect him. He seems to have forgotten God had a special camp of angels there to protect him. We see that in Genesis chapter 32, 1 to 2. His great fear and distress was not, praise the Lord, appropriated for someone under God's protection. Jacob's fear was wrong because he followed after a great deliverance. Jacob's fear was wrong because he had just had a remarkable divine visitation. Jacob's fear was wrong because he probably arose out of a remembrance of his old sins. Jacob could have said, I don't know if Esau is coming to me in peace or in war. I hope for peace, but if it is war, I will trust God will protect me. Here he, he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. In splitting his company, Jacob used human wisdom and schemes to prepare for Esau's coming. He should have trusted that God hallelujah, could protect all he had. Jacob forgot about God's two camps in Genesis chapter 32 verse 2 and he tried to make his own two companies in Genesis chapter 32 verse 24 praise the Lord we read that he meets a man and he wrestles with a man he says then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day now when he saw that he did not prevail against him he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him not here a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day Jacob didn't wrestle with the man instead a man wrestled with him Jacob didn't, didn't start out wanting anything from God God wanted something from him. God wanted all of Jacob's proud reliance and fleshy scheming and God came to take it out of him by force if necessary. It does not say that he wrestled with the man but there wrestled the man with him. We call him wrestling Jacob and so he was but we must not forget the wrestling man or rather the wrestling Christ the wrestling angel of the covenant who had come to wrestle out of him much of his own strength and much of his own wisdom there may be things we are holding on to and don't want to let it go but God wants to rest it from us. Hallelujah. A man wrestled with him at the following verse he showed. This is no mere man. This is another, another special appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament before his incarnation in Bethlehem. This was God in human form. Praise God. He says, 
until the breaking of the day. We can only imagine what this scene looked like. Perhaps something it looked like a barroom fight or a scene from the Wild West. And perhaps at other times it looked like an intense wrestling match. How did Jacob ever manage to keep his struggle throughout the entire night? We don't know, but I, we do know that his determination to hang in there was no greater than our frequent determination to have our own way and eventually, eventually win over God. Note, he, he sees that he did not prevail against him. As the fight progressed, it seemed Jacob was somewhat evenly matched against the man, but the match was only evenly matched in appearance. The man could have won easily at any time using supernatural power, for he was God. Sometimes we feel, hallelujah, a man really can contend with God. A man or a woman in rebellion against God might seem to do pretty well. No, here the match seems in appearance only. God can turn the tide at any time and he allows the match to go on for his own purpose. Hallelujah. It is hard to imagine Jacob working so hard and feeling he is getting the best of his opponent until finally the man changed the nature of the struggle in a moment. Jacob must have felt very defeated. Hallelujah. But in Genesis chapter 32, verse 26, Jacob pleased to the man and he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Let me go for the day breaks. Hallelujah. The man let Jacob know that this would not last much longer. Even though Jacob clung to him desperately, Jacob had lost. A better and a greater man defeated Jacob. There is something to be said for every man's doing. He's resting with God. And then acknowledged God's greatness after having been defeated. We must know we serve a God who is greater than us and we cannot conquer much of anything until he conquers us. Praise God. I will not let you go until you bless me. This wasn't Jacob dictating terms to God as he did on previous occasions. God overcame Jacob here and we know Hallelujah from this. It is in Hosea chapter 12, verse 3. And it says, He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is a memorial. Now Jacob sought this blessing with weeping. He knew he was defeated, yet desperately wanted a blessing from the greater one. Hallelujah. Times in our life, I know in myself that times I just want God to bless me. Hallelujah. I just want a great blessing from God. And here, it says he, he took his brother by the heel in the womb and in his strength he struggled with God, yet he struggled with the angel and prevailed, he wept and sought favour from him. He found him in Bethel and there he spake to us that is the Lord God of hosts. Hallelujah. He says, unless you bless me, through his past, Jacob was always clever and sneaky enough 
so he never felt the need to trust in God. Here he was alone, hallelujah, with God. Now he could only rely on the blessings of God. Now, Jacob, we know, was a strong, fit man. In Genesis chapter 29, verse 1, to Genesis, Genesis chapter 29, verse 3, we read, Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they were watered the flocks. Hallelujah. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth, and thither with all the flocks gathered, and they, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in the place. So here it describes that he was strong, fit man. But here Jacob is reduced to the place where we all could do, but was to hold on to the Lord with everything that he had. As a boxer or a wrestler who is losing the battle in the ring, who cannot stop the assault of raining punches that come down upon them. Hallelujah. He desperately clings, desperately lunges onto opponents and he holds his opponent in a bear hug in an attempt to, to stop the assault of punches. Hallelujah. This was Jacob. He was desperate and he was exhausted and he could not fight on anymore, but he could hold on. Hallelujah. This is not a bad place to be, but to hold on to God. Here God answers Jacob's prayer in Genesis chapter 32, verse 9. And Jacob says, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said this unto me, return unto thy country, unto thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 10, it says, I am not worthy of the least of thy mercies, and of all the truth which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over the Jordan, and now I have become two bands. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 32, verse 11, he said, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the land of my brother and from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, least he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. Genesis chapter 32, verse 12, he says, And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Note here, yet before Jacob could be delivered from the hand of his brother, he had to be delivered from his own self-will and self-reliance. It is evident that as soon as he felt that he must fall, he grasped the other man. Hallelujah. With a kind of death grip and he would not let him go. Now in his weakness, he will prevail. So Jacob thought the real enemy was outside of him, being Esau. The real enemy was his own carnal, fleshy nature, which had not been conquered by God yet. Hallelujah. So in Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 to 29, Jacob's name is changed, and he is a blessed man. So he said to him, what is your name? The angel says to him, he said, Jacob. <clears throat> and he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God, with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that thou askest about my name? And he blessed him there. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is your name? Jacob asked. So Jacob must have felt a sense of shame admitting his name also. Jacob was all associated with deception and cheating. 
Yet this was who he was. And Jacob had to admit it. We all want to name ourselves favorably. We say, I am firm. You are stubborn. They are often fools. Note that God wouldn't allow Jacob to cover up his name because in his case it reflected his true nature. Hallelujah. Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. The name Israel is a compound of two names. Sarah meaning fight, struggle or rule, and El meaning God. Some take the name Israel to mean he who struggles with God or he who rules with God. But in Hebrew, the names sometimes mean <clears throat> here, God is not the object of the verb, but the subject. Example, Daniel means God judges, not he judges God. This principle shows us Israel likely means God rules. From this point on, this son of Isaac will be called Jacob twice as often as he's called Israel. Apparently there's still plenty of the old man left in him. The lives of many of the Lord's chosen people alternate between Israel and Jacob. Sometimes we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And at another time we cry. Who is sufficient of these things? Like princes we prevail with God. Hallelujah. And our true Israels. But perhaps when the sun has gone down, we limp with Jacob. And though the spirit be willing, the flesh is weak. For ye have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Jacob prevailed in the sense that he endured through his struggle until God thoroughly conquered him. Now when you battle with God, you only win by losing and surrendering your all, by not giving up until you know you have lost. This is how Jacob prevailed. What is that you ask about my name? Angel said. The man promptly refused to tell Jacob his name because he figured out Jacob already knew his name. And it turned out Jacob did exactly know who, he, who this was. And he blessed him there. Surely this was the blessing of being defeated by God. Hallelujah. Note it was the blessing of the passing of the old Jacob's life and the coming of the new Israel's life. It may also have been to do with the great idea of the blessing of Abraham and meeting Jacob's immediate need for security in the midst of fear. Whatever Jacob needed, God's blessing provided at that moment. We note that he blessed him there at that particular place, the place of spiritual trial and testing, the place of intense pleading to God, the place of seeing the face of God, and the place of conscious weakness. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, verses 30 to 32, two memorials of this event of seen. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him, and he limped, hallelujah, on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle, the shank, which is of the hip socket. Because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. Jacob called the name of this place Peniel. The first memorial was a name. Jacob's name 
named the place Benil, which means the face of God, because he did know the name of the man who he wrestled with. He was the same one who wrestled with Jacob all his life. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jacob also understood it was only by God's grace and mercy he escaped from this episode with his life. No tear, no man should be allowed to wrestle with God and live. But God was gracious. He limped on his hip. Hallelujah. The second memorial was a perpetual limp. Jacob will remember he's being conquered by God with every step he took the rest of his life. No, the, the memorial of his weakness was to be with him as long as he lived. Hallelujah. Now, how pleased would you and I be go halting all our days with such weakness as Jacob had? If we might also have had the blessing that he thus won. In Genesis chapter 33, the meeting of Jacob and Esau. Hallelujah. In verses 1 and 2. Now Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him with 400 men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. He divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maidservants. These preparations were not necessary. Examples on belief or of human wisdom and strength. Yet the order of the group show that Jacob openly favoured Rachel and her son Joseph with Rachel and Joseph last. <clears throat> Excuse me. He put the maid servants and their children in front. Leah and their children were more protected than the two maid servants, Bilhah and Zilpah, and their respective children. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 33, Jacob demonstrated his submission to Esau. Then he crossed over and before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. He crossed over before them after being conquered by God. Jacob now led the procession to meet Esau. This displayed some change of character. Bowed himself to the ground here. Jacob already said all the gifts and showed he didn't want to take anything material from Esau. Then by bowing down, he showed he was submitting himself to his brother and wanted no social power over him. If Jacob had not superstitiously tried to steal the blessing 20 years before, all this would have been unnecessary. Jacob's promise to Jacob, let people serve you and nations bow down to you, be master over your brethren, would have been more immediately fulfilled. In Genesis chapter 27, verse 29, it said, let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. It is still common to suffer some problems because we try to accomplish what we think to be God's will or in unbelief to protect ourselves with merely human energy and wisdom. God never needs us to sin to help him fulfill his plan in our lives. In Genesis chapter 33, verse 47, Esau warmly greets Jacob and his family. But Esau ran to meet him and embrace him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. And he lifted his eyes and saw the women and children and said, who are these with you? So he said, the children whom God has graciously given your servant. 
Then the maidservants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. After Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Esau ran to meet him. This probably, probably terrified Jacob. Surely he thought his life would soon end here. God had worked in Esau, and he only wanted to bless Jacob. He fell on his neck and kissed him and wept. Esau and Jacob did not feel a need to discuss and resolve the past. God worked in both their hearts, and there was no need to discuss or argue it, it all over again. What was to pass was to pass. Hallelujah. Who are these with you? Esau said. In a moving scene, Jacob introduced his large family to his brother Esau. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 11, Esau received Jacob's gifts. Then Esau said, what do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, these are to find favour in thy sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. And Jacob said, no, please, if I have now found favour in your sight, then receive my present from my hand, insomuch as I have seen your face, hallelujah, as though I had seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please, please take my blessing that it, that it is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough, so he urged him, and he took it. Hallelujah. What do you mean by all this company which I meet? Jacob generously, generous gifts confused Esau. He did not expect this, showing that he had no sense of su su superiority over Jacob, or did not have a strong sense that Jacob owned him. I have enough, I have enough. But Esau and Jacob have I blessed testimony. They could both say, I have enough. Godliness with contentment is great. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, he says, But godliness with contentment is great. Esau's peace and contentment showed him to be a remarkable, blessed man. Though he did not receive the promise of the Abrahamic covenant as he had hoped. Although Esau did not receive the blessing great blessing, the covenant blessing, that having gone to Jacob, who secured it by deception. Yet Esau did receive a great blessing of a temporal kind, which Isaac pronounced upon him with all further favour of a father who loved his son. Hallelujah. Esau thus received what he most wanted, for we cared very little for the spiritual blessing, not being a spiritual man. And when he obtained the temporal blessing, that satisfied his heart. And he said, it is enough. So we urged him and he took it. Esau receiving of the gifts was important, to, hallelujah, to this journey straight back to Jacob giving of the gifts. When Jacob gave such generous gifts, it was his way of saying to Esau that he was sorry and when Esau accepted the gifts it was his way of accepting Jacob and saying he was forgiven. Note here in that culture one never accepted a gift from an enemy only from a friend. So to accept a gift was to accept <coughs> excuse me, the friendship. Now in closing Jacob travels to the promised land in Genesis chapter 33 verses 12 to 16 and Jacob and Esau part their ways. Jacob goes to Sukkoth. Then said Esau, let us take our journey, let us go, I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, my Lord knows that the children are weak and the flocks and the herds which are nursing with me. Now they part from the present. I will go with thee as an escort of Vanguard. 
Jacob explains that this would be inconvenient for both parties, as his tender children and sufferings would not be able to keep up with them, with each old men. At this pace of the cattle at fast, as the breeze of travelling with cattle will permit unto Salem. Jacob is travelling to the land of Canaan, Canaan, sorry, and to the residence of his father. Hallelujah. But on arriving there, it will be his first duty to return. Hallelujah. The visit of Esau. The very circumstance that he sent messengers to apprise his brother of his arrival implies that he was prepared to cultivate friendly relationships with him. Jacob also declined the offer of some of the men that Esau had with him. Had with him. He had doubtless enough of hands to manage his remaining flock and he now relied more than ever on the protection of God, who had proved himself faithful and an effectual guardian. In summarizing, Jacob was blessed. Hallelujah. His name was changed from Israel to Israel, sorry, which means Prince of God. God will bless those who seek after him. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. So in the lesson, it signifies about the promises of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we hang on to the promises of God, hallelujah, Jesus, we will be blessed. Hallelujah. So I pray that you have enjoyed the Sunday School lesson today. I pray that you receive something from the Sunday School lesson. I pray that God will bless it, the hearer richly. Praise be to God. Next week's lesson is, is February the 6th, 2022. Series 3, which is following Jesus. Lesson 3.1. Lesson idea, I will be led by the Spirit and surrender to God's call on my life. Focus verses on Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Lesson text, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 15. And the truth about God, God provides the resources necessary for believers to fulfill their calling. Praise be to God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Each and every one of you, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, we give thanks to him today. And may God continue to be with you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.